Now we're going to look at key area three in the second unit of your biology and in our last video we were having a look at various systems, the respiratory system or just talked about them, the circulatory system and in this video we're going to have a look at the nervous system. Now to do that we're going to look first of all at the brain. I'm going to look at some a few of the structures in the brain and have a look at their functions. So if I just move this onto this diagram here. Here we're looking at a brain from the side on. So over on the side here, which says, let's see if I can get my pen working. It's, oh, this is jumping about all over the place. On this side here is the side where your eyes would be or your and your forehead, eyes will be down here. And here is the at the back of the head. So you're looking at one side of the brain and this structure that is here, the largest structure of the brain here, this is called the cerebrum. Now the cerebrum is involved in all your conscious thought and thinking and your personality and things like that are contained within there. But this is a region of conscious thought. Here, this part here, is called the cerebellum and the cerebellum is involved in balance and fine motor coordination so in coordination and in balance and we have this part here as well I'm just going to look at the name here the medulla it says here the medulla oblongata but you only need to know the term medulla and the medulla is involved in regulating your heart rate, your respiratory rate and if that part of your brain gets damaged then you're termed brain dead and from there you've then got your spinal cord coming down. Now there's two other structures I just want to mention here and that, that's this one here called the hypothalamus. We have a look at that later on in the course. The hypothalamus is involved in the regulation of your uh, body water and of temperature and of blood glucose as well there's an involvement of the hypothalamus there and the other structure which actually isn't la labeled is this here this is a gland it's called the pituitary gland I'll try and write that out The pituitary gland and it's involved in releasing various hormones and we'll have a look at that later on in particular one called ADH that's involved in the regulation of the water in your body. So these are the main structures that we want to or I want to talk about. When you're looking at the brain here on this side side on like this then you have to remember that there's a mirror image of that on the other side. We're only looking at the the side that is facing us but um, this here is called a hemisphere and there's another hemisphere that is on the other side. I think I might have a wee diagram of that on the next slide here just from the back. Yeah here we're looking at the back of the brain here and you'll see here's this um, the cerebrum here and the cerebellum's down here, and then the medulla is in here. I mentioned before that the cerebrum is involved in conscious thought, decision-making processes, and so on. Your cerebellum is involved in balance, and the medulla is involved in maintaining your heart rate and your respiratory rate. Now here's a wee past paper question. In this question here, it asks, which letter indicates the site of memory and of conscious responses. And so therefore the answer to this here would be A, because that is pointing to the cerebrum. B is pointing to the cerebellum. So that would need to be about balance or about coordination. D is pointing to the medulla. So that would be about the heart rate or the respiratory rate. And C is talking about the spinal cord. So make sure in your notes you've got a note of these structures and of the function of each one of the structures. Um, your cere cerebrum involved in conscious thinking, your cerebellum involved in 
coordination and in balance and your medulla involved in your respiratory rate and your coordination. So we're going to move on to have a look at the actual nervous system itself and we're going to look in on this diagram here and when we look at the nervous system we'll see here I've got two part uh, two statements here I've got something called the CNS and the PNS now CNS oh CNS stands for central nervous system and the central nervous system is made up by your brain and by your spinal cord so when we're talking about the central nervous system it's just the brain and the spinal cord but there are other nerves in your body and they run out from the spinal cord from various places so it would be nerves that run out from the spinal cord here down your arms and here to various parts of your your body and further further down there'll be nerves that will run out from your spinal cord to your down your legs and these all make up what's called the peripheral nervous system or PNS I've got written here. Now I've used this term nerves but often there's another term that's used and that term is neuron. So I'm going to use the, that term from now on. And there are three types of neurons that you find in your body. The first type that we've got up here, these are this is called a motor neuron. Now you don't need to know the actual structure of these nerves. But what you need to know is that the motor neuron is a uh, nerve or a neuron that runs from the spinal cord out to something like a muscle or out to a gland that releases some kind of hormone. So that mo motor neuron is resp responsible for sending out signals that help your muscles to contract. And often we call these muscles in the nervous system, we call that an effector, something that has an effect on something in the body, the muscle for example. Now the other type of neuron we have is this one that we've got here in the middle and it's called a relay neuron. Oh, if I can get this here to work. So it's this one here, a relay neuron. Now just like in a relay race, the relay neuron um, is there to send information from one neuron to another. And when we're looking at this, we actually really look at that relay neuron taking information from this third neuron that I've got here in this diagram, and that is called a sensory neuron. Now, a sensory neuron is a neuron that is found in your sense organs, so things like your skin, for example, or your eyes or your ears. These sensory neurons pick up information from the outside environment and send that information to your central nervous system and from there um, nerve, nerve impulses can be sent out to the motor neurons and it can have some kind of effect on the body and the relay neuron is there in the middle of these two neurons to actually relay the information from one to another and we'll have a look at how this works in a bit more detail just in a wee moment so on the next page here I've just got Another example of a question, a past paper question, and it just says, name the type of neur neuron which links the receptors and the sense organs to the central nervous system. So in that case, that would be the sensory neuron that was involved. Now, we're going to have a look at how these neurons are linked together and how they result in um, some action that your body takes place. I'm going to have a look at something called a reflex arc. Now you probably all know about your reflexes. You've probably maybe tried to do the uh, hammer on your knee to get your lower leg to move or something. But a reflex action, you'll know all about if, for example, somebody um, puts something near your eyes or dust comes near your eyes and you will blink. That is a reflex action. Or if you put your hand on something hot, or if you stand on something, like a, a nail or a tack, then your arm or your leg will just move away very, very rapidly. 
And the function of a reflex arc is actually a protective function. It's there to protect the body. And the feature of it is that it's very rapid, it's very quick, and it's involuntary. You don't have any control over whether you're going to blink or not. If some dust gets into your eyes, you just do it. Or you don't have any control over pulling your hand away from a hot plate. Um, you just do that. And the way that it, the nervous system is involved in that is that these three neurons that I was talking about are all involved. So in the example we've got here, we've got somebody who is touching or whose hand has got above a hot candle. And what happens is that that heat serves, sends nerve impulses along the sensory neuron. And those nerve impulses travel up towards the spinal cord. So here we've got the spinal cord here. It's actually kind of taken out of the body. Your spinal cord would normally, of course, be running along here. And what this diagram is doing is sort of taking that out and you're looking at down at it from, see if there'd been a slice taken across here. And you're looking down into it. So here's the bony part of your spine. And then here's the part inside here in your spinal cord where all the nerves are running. Now, that sensory neuron has sent that information up into the spinal cord. And then from there, the information or that nerve impulse is sent across the relay neuron. That's this neuron here inside the spinal cord. And then the nerve, a nerve impulse is sent down the motor neuron to the muscle in this case, or the effector. And that nerve impulse stimulates that muscle to contract. And when the muscle contracts, then the arm will lift itself away from the candle and that protects the body. Now you'll notice that I haven't mentioned the brain in this and that's because the reflex arc is actually just involving the spinal cord at the moment. There will be other signals that will send up to your brain, but um, the reflex, it, it, the reason why it's so fast is because it's just going through this arc really um, that we're looking at here through the sensory neuron, the relay neuron, and then the motor neuron. So that makes it very, very fast. And you'll notice that, in fact, if you ever burn yourself, you'll pull your finger away, and it's a moment or two later that you actually start to feel the pain. And that's because then the information about pain is then being sent up to your brain. But the actual reflex has, it has been much, much quicker than that. You don't have to stop and think, oh, I've got my hand my hand above a flame. Oh, it's getting hot. I'll move my arm away. You just do that because of this reflex arc that is there. Now, I've looked at doing this on this diagram that's here, but sometimes very often, oh, sometimes very often the reflex arc is drawn looking something like this. And the neurons are drawn there. Sometimes maybe not all of them are labelled and you have to work out which ones are which. So in this example here, they've got receptors in the skin or it might be um, your eye or some kind of sense organ. You sense a smell or hearing or whatever. But receptors in the skin here and then the information passed along this neuron here, which will need to be the sensory neuron, up towards the relay neuron here in the central nervous system. So this is a relay neuron here. And then that impulse or that response is sent down the motor neuron to the effector, in this case, the muscle. Or as I said before, it could be something like a gland. And the muscle moves the arm away uh, or the hand away it for in order to protect the body. Now, When you had a, a look at the diagram that was here before, you will see that the sensory neuron comes up towards the relay neuron, and then the relay neuron is near the motor neuron, but they're not actually attached. In actual fact, there's a gap between them. And that gap is known as a, a synapse or a synapse. And sometimes the gap that is there between the neurons is referred to as well as a synaptic cleft. So the gap that's there, that's the cleft. And 
this area here between or the junction between two nerves is known as a, sy a synapse. Now the nerve impulses need to be transferred from one neuron to another and for example in this reflex arc. Now how that happens is that there are in actual fact a nerve impulse is, is to do with charges and we don't need to go into the detail of how that happens but in that process what happens is that the positive charges that are there they cause a neurotransmitter to be released. Now a neurotransmitter is a chemical and that chemical is able to diffuse across from one neuron across the synaptic cleft or across the synapse to the other neuron and when the neuro the neurotransmitter gets into or arrives at the other neuron it causes the impulse to continue along the rest of the neuron so the example that we've got here is a nerve impulse that's traveling in this direction and therefore the neurotransmitters are released here they travel across from this neuron to this one and that stimulates the nerve impulse to then travel along this neuron. And that's a brief summary of your nervous system.